Welcome back all you Flux Automators and in this video I am going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between all three of Govi Glide Hexagon panels in the range. So first of all we got the standard, then we have the Pro and then we have the Ultra. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you exactly what the products look like in terms of the aesthetics and we're going to go through some of the scenes so you can see the differences between one and the other or two and the other. So hopefully that'll give you the right information so then you can set out your tech space. So we've got the standard, the Pro and the Ultra. So in this video, we're not gonna go into what's in the box because I've already covered that in the other videos, so check them out on the channel. But all I wanna do is look at the devices side by side, look at all the connectors. We're not gonna look at the power supplies or anything like that because they're all virtually the same thing. But we're just gonna see the differences and how they're connected and the quality. And then we will put them up and see what they really look like. So first things first, we have the standard right here, which is matte, flat, nothing really to see there. And then on the back, we have the connectors. Now, I haven't got the cover for this because it's currently on the wall, so it's quite bare at the minute, but this is what it looks like underneath the cover that sticks to the wall. So we have that one. Then we have the Pro. Okay, so this one, okay, it looks slightly different to the previous one in terms of it has the edges on this, where this one doesn't have the edges, it's quite, it's flat. Turning it underneath, you got the same construction. Once I pull this off, okay, um, but it looks slightly different. Okay, so we have three in, ins and outs, whereas this one, we have six. Okay, so it's interesting how that actually sits up compared to this one. Funniest thing is, you still have these numbers around the edges when there isn't any inputs or outputs, so it just works set up a little bit differently. So we'll put that back on here. And then we have the Ultra. So what you can see right now, the Ultra is a lot bigger than the other panels, okay? And the other ones have a flat matte finish and this one has a gloss. So it enables the inner lines and the outer lines to actually pop and be a bit more bright compared to what happens in this one. This one doesn't have that at all, so, okay. Turning over, you'll see a major difference now. The way the connectors fit in this one, they're actually plugs rather than sliders. And then you have these pads on the side, whereas the other one, you just have one pad in the middle. Now these are actually connected with Velcro, which is really good. So you can place them and you can take them off if you ever need to. Um, and then when you're setting up your shape, it's easily then to, to turn things around. But still gotta be careful making sure you set it up correctly the first time, because if not, it's a pain in the rear end. Okay, weight wise, now, I would say these two are almost the same. This one is a lot more weightier, hence the reason why you've got more pads on there. Um, does feel like a more premium product compared to the other two, and actually looks like it even with the lights off. But as you can see the progression from one to two to three, you do go up in quality and the ability to manage the lights and the panels a lot differently. So. Let's do a tester so I can show you exactly what they look like in comparison side to side. And then at the end, I'll give you my verdict on what I think in terms of the quality and is it worth paying the extra coming from the standard to the pro to the ultra, which will then give you enough information to make that right choice. So one of the other things that you'll notice with the three different panels. So for each device, you have a different type of connector. On the standard, you have more of a ribbon type Okay, which is kind of flat. You can't really go in too many directions. Then for the Pro, you have more of a cable, which is quite long, but it's a different type of plug compared to the Pro, okay, which is an actual plug in itself, has much better of a connection here, and it's easier to snap in when you're actually mounting it on the wall. Compared to the other ones, we have to slide in and try and get it in in funny angles, which can sometimes cause you a little bit of problems, but take your time and you'll get it right. Now, if you like any of the devices that I cover in these videos, 
please make sure to check out the QR code down here on your left so you can go directly to Amazon and purchase those devices, which enables me to bring more videos to you guys in and around home automation and technology. So here we are. Now it's time to do the head to head between these three devices. And what we have from left to right is the basic, the pro and the ultra. So right now they're just in a random setting. So what I'm gonna do right now is go for the different scenes and see how they look. Now at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a representation of what is actually on the app connected to that particular device. So you can see how I'm changing the settings and how things are working and moving. So to make sure there's not too much glare going on on the screen, what I've decided to do is set everything to 10% right now. And then later on, I'll increase it so you can see the differences in the brightness. But for the main test, it's all gonna be set at 10%. So first things first, let's just go through the colors and just see how the colors are represented on screen. So we'll set everything to color. Okay, and then we'll just set a red. Select all, select red. Select red, select all first. <clears throat> all the devices are now set to red and you can see the subtle differences in between this being very blank. Then we have a little bit of segmentation going on here and then a lot more over here. So you can see everything is actually portioned out really nice and clearly. You can see a little bit here along the lines and then over here nothing at all. So one of the key things you'll notice with these three devices is that the standard has the ability to shine light out of the back of the panels. Now, this is something that you may not see so much right now because we're using a black table. I was trying to put them on the wall, but it was a whole other situation. So I decided let's put them on the desk and then do it that way. So you'll see underneath, and I'll show you some images right now of the light feeding off the back. You can see it a little bit on the Pro as well, but in the Ultra, there is nothing, no light bleeding off the side at all. So in terms of color matching, they all represent the same color of red. There isn't much of a difference I can actually see right now, but let's go through all the colors and then see if that is true for every color that's in there. Let's turn on to orange. Okay, so orange is a little bit interesting once you switch over to it. The Ultra doesn't actually go straight in for the deeper oranges like this, but you can change the dial down the bottom and you can probably get more of an orangey kind of feel. Okay. Okay. So now I've got it kind of similar matching, but in terms of the controls over here, it doesn't really just jump into that full orange like these two do. It does a different shade of orange. That's something to be aware of when you are selecting colors in the room that some of your devices may not represent the same colors on all devices. Let's go on to a yellow. Yellows again, I would say on the standard and the pro, they have like a kind of orange, uh, they have like a kind of greeny kind of tinge to it. Whereas the ultra is really nice and yellow and it represents the same that's on the app itself. Now you can, as I said, move around and change things around. So in terms of the yellowness, it's a little bit, different from this one compared to this one. Because this has a transparent overlay, it does produce like much cleaner cut colors, but that's beneficial because we have the edges around and in the middle. Whereas here you have more of a haze because it is a matte finish. Let's move on to greens now. Okay, moving to the greens and you'll notice once again, we have a nice slick candy type of green over here and a fuzzed hazy, type of feeling on these devices right here. Now, the representation of what I'm gonna show you on screen compared to real life is gonna be a little bit different, obviously, but in terms of the way they manage the colors right now, these two manage it the same, and this one is has a lot more of a higher quality feel to it, or view to it. Let's go to blues, same thing again. The blues do really look all the same. Let's go to cyan. Cyan looks good. Because we have these fully see-through um, panels, edges, um, it does give a lot more of a sharp type of neon type of look compared to these. Now, when I raise the brightness of it, it may change these a little bit and they'll, they'll look a little less dull, but 
in terms of just using 10%, this is what it looks like. Let's go to purple. Purples are good. A more of a lilac type of purple over here compared to these. But as I said, you change the settings to make it exactly how you want. So let's see if I can match them a little bit more. You're not gonna be able to match like for like in terms of the, the shades. Um, these two you can, this one you can't. And let's just go to white. We have a, a more of a white here. We have like a grayish kind of tint to this. And then the same over here, but then because you have the divides in the middle, um, it gives you that white light coming through. So that is the basic stuff. What I want to do right now is just turn everything to 100%, just so you can get a, a kind of view to it. It's probably going to glare out the camera. So let's give it a try and see what happens. So let's go 100% over here, 100% here and 100% here. Okay, so now you're getting a white, a kind of grayish white here, and then a gray with the white outlines over here. So you can see the, the progression in terms of quality wise from these. These do represent white a lot better than these do. Um, I guess because the thickness and the shape and everything like that, it does change things a little bit for this device but you can probably work these two together more than working these two or these two. Okay, let's turn everything back down to 10% and then we'll go through the scenes and if we have to raise the brightness for all of them just to add that punch, then we will do. Okay, so back down to 10%. Let's go into scenes, okay? And then we'll scroll so we can see how the scenes are set up on these three different devices. Okay, so let's go to the first tab, which is 3D. And you'll notice that the standard doesn't have that 3D tab because it doesn't represent anything in a 3D type, whereas these ones do. So for now, we'll just leave that one cycling and then we'll focus on these two to see the type of 3D representations that they show. So let's try and go like for like. Let's look at the app and see which ones actually are named the same and then see if we can select them. So we have matrix. So as you'll see right now, a real big difference between the Pro and the Ultra. Now these are still set at 10%, but you are getting a more 3D effect over here, especially if you're standing from a distance, but this still does, you know, represent that as well. Okay, you've got a lot more haze, as you can see, whereas these have like a sharper lines to it. So we'll turn them all up to 30% for this. Okay, so now I've turned everything up to 30% on each one of those. I think it works better when we actually use the scenes compared to flat, straight colors, okay? These right now don't have the 3D, as I've said to you before, and these ones do. So let's continue to look at the 3D representation. Let's put the speeds at, in the middle. Okay, so what I'm noticing, I'm trying to change the speed on the Pro compared to the Ultra using the same matrix and it's not allowing me. Every time I try and change the slider, it brings it back down. Don't know if that's some kind of fault or some type of functionality that this adds, but for this particular example, it doesn't allow us to do that. Let's move on to the next one. So we have Cubic, a totally different representation of how it manages the edges of the 3D shapes. We've got the lines working in the middle. Now, these ones look like they have lines. Um, we'll see as we go along if, if these are separate from the actual inner panels. We can change the speed on that, as I've said. And can we change the speed here? No. Okay, not sure why it gives you the option to, and then you can't do anything, but that's what it is. Okay, let's see what other ones that we can match off. Um, let's look at crawl really quickly creating the same type of effect, but what you'll notice inside the more of the LED corners, okay, the colors are actually changing and moving around. Okay, so that's a cool effect. And also in between, they move up and down. Okay, doesn't have that representation on here at all. Let's try Phantom. Even though they're called the same thing, they are slightly different. Um, but that's how it is with many of the Govi devices as we've seen so far. Even though they're named the same, they function in terms of color-wise a little bit different. 
probably the way they manage the transitions are more or less the same, but the colors are very uh, different. Okay, let's try layering. Okay, working and doing the same type of thing. Can we change the speed on here? Nope. Can we change the speed on this one? Yes, we can. This is a way better product, but obviously you're gonna pay more for it. Let's try glistening. And on glistening, we can actually change the speed on this one. So let's push both of them to 100% and then see what happens here. Okay, so this one is a lot more erratic in terms of its changing, even though the speeds of both of them are set all the way to the top. And this is a more of a smoother transition. So it all depends on what you want to display and what you want to make your environment feel like. Okay, but we can, at least we can bring this one down to kind of match that one. Okay, but you just can't speed this one up anymore. Let's try one more. Let's try Illusion. So Illusion, they're kind of the same in terms of the way they are transitioning, but the colors, um, I guess this one's cycling at the moment. This one's staying more purpley blue. I'm not sure if it's going to change, um, but this is going between purple and blue, where this is a more of a, a purplish blue standard. So you'll also see right now, there is a little bit of difference in terms of how many 3D scenes you have on here compared to the newer one. Now, I'm not sure if that's something software related. For some reason, I have all these three devices set to dark mode, but only my newer device is actually showing me the dark mode. So I don't know if that's an application thing or that I need to update, or that's how it just is once you have a older device. Okay, also looking at the three devices, um, we can see we have natural life and emotion. You have 3D, natural life and emotion and then funny natural life. Okay, festival and then emotion. Okay, do we have any more? Got funny here and then you have funny festival. So you get the same scene tabs, but they're just in different orders, but it'd be nice if they were all in the same order, but as long as you can find what you need to, you should be okay. Um, so, Let's go to natural for all three devices. So natural, you'll see some of the things that you'll see many of the other devices. Um, most of them have natural. And uh, one of the key ones is forest. So in natural forest right now, and as you can see in my background, I have that set to my devices. My hexagon panels on my right hand side are turned off right now because I've had to use them right here, but I will put them back after. So you just got my left and then you've also got the back in. So you'll notice here in natural, we have 10 scenes right here. We have eight here, but then we have a lot more over here. Now, some of these may be new or they're just in different category areas. So I wouldn't worry too much about not having as many scenes or this seems like it has more scenes than the other. To be honest, they're usually all the same all across the board. They're just in different tabs. So looking at this forest right now, this is to me more of a forest representation. Um, I guess these two over here do represent the forest in, in green and in fall, I guess. So let's go to sunset glow. And you can see right here, these are more dominantly red and orange with a bit of pink. These are more pinkish, purplish, lilac. And this is a montage of all all of the colors and you get a different bit of separation here and there, but you can't really do much over here. Whereas here you can segment the different parts of the panels and this one, you can segment the different parts of the panels and the outlines. Rainbow is one of my favorite ones. Okay, especially when testing, you have a lot more colors going on here and then here you have a nice transition. You can see the flow going from bottom to top here these ones just select the different panels and then these ones just change as the color is merging from one to the other. So you can see the benefits of having this over that and that over that. Okay, one more we'll check in this panel is Aura. Okay, and kind of similar to what I have in the background again. Um, these actually work complementary until this one starts changing and adding some purples. So as I said, the scenes 
have the same names and have elements of the same thing. But as you can see over here, it does do something a little bit different compared to these. So just be aware of that when you're setting up your scenes and in your environment. So let's go to the funny tab. And here is where things get a little bit more spicy. Um, so let's choose picker on all three devices. So now we have Kaleidoscope set on all three devices. And I think this really shows the difference between the devices the most. Now we've got here is just transitioning between different colors. This is transitioning the different panels, but also doing a bit of breathing at the same time and merging of the colors. Whereas this one's changing all the different panels, changing the outlines, changing the middles, changing the colors, and it's doing a lot more. As you can see, it can transition between different colors inside the outer lining. So I've chosen Kaleidoscope for these three devices, and you'll see the subtle differences as we move along. Here, it just gives you a mixture or montage of all the different colors together, different flashes and breathing. Here, same thing, but it enables it to be split into different parts of the panel. Whereas on the last one, it will do something a little bit different because it has more capabilities and more control. It's actually just changing the panels and then changing the outlines of the particular panel. So you can change the direction. Um, let's go from outside in on all devices. Another thing to point out is that some, sometimes you can manage the way the panels light up. So we you can look at here, we're doing outside in, outside in, but then you can't select that for this particular scene. Now you can select this on different scenes that you use, but just not in this particular selection. Okay, so in terms of the Fonny tab, there aren't many that we can match with the Ultra, whereas the Standard and the Pro have a lot more similarities. So let's go to the Festival tab. Okay, so here's another thing that's really interesting. I'm not sure why they don't focus and make sure that each device has the same type of tabs with the same scenes in it. Now you can set something up for Christmas or Halloween on these two, but you cannot do it on this one. Now that's a little bit, you know, funny that you're not able to, you know, create Halloween, Christmas and all those kind of things. Um, from here, you just have to create something or select a scene that kind of represents that, but you can't get it at the box right here. So now we've selected soothing on all the devices. Um, I'm trying to look at the ones that do have things similarly. And if you're looking at it now, I really think that right now the Pro is doing a real good job in terms of the soothing. I like the way it has the pastel colors in there, which really goes well with the new Rope Light 2. So that can be combined. Now this does have the ability to create pastel colors, but just not in this particular scene. These ones, they're okay. You know, I think this does the best job out of all of them right this minute. Let's try Dreamlike. Okay, so with Dreamlike, these all could work in combination. We have a lot more purples going on over here. We have purples and blues here, and then purples and blues here. And that is starting to transition into blue, but you do get a bit more of a, an effect over here. I guess what you could do is maybe speed it up. Sweet, really nice. Um, you got a, like a nice pinky, you actually got some browns in here, which I've never really seen before on LED strips that you get a brown color. Um, so that's really surprising to be honest. Any other LED strips I've ever seen, you most always never see brown, but they can represent brown over here. Not so much over here, you get beiges, you got oranges, but no brown. Big thumbs up for that. I didn't think there would be a brown uh, represented in LEDs. Okay, so now we've got energetic on all three of them. Um, I do like the way it represents it here. Here, okay, and here, not so much. But the winner right now is the Ultra. When it comes to you know managing the colors and giving you more of a 3D feel and an in-depth, more workable and visually challenging um, setup. So one more thing to point out with the three devices is that these two fill the whole panel, okay? So you get full colors or full color blocking 
over here. But in the Ultra, you can actually turn off the inners. Okay, so certain of the scenes will allow you to actually turn off what's inside. So you just get the outer. And as you can see right now, you got that super cool effect. So you'll see now we've got like a breathing effect. Now this is in the funny. You have funnies over here, but they are a lot different. I really like this part of this panel because it gives you a lot more variety and feel to your space. So you don't get the same scenes, but these ones in here will do something a lot more different. Okay. So it does give you the ability to be a bit more um, selective of how much light you want to be displayed and how your scene wants to feel and look. You can also go into the effects lab on here and do a lot more customization. So you can really get into how you want your panels to look. Whereas these, you can do customization, but you can't turn off certain parts of the panels and certain parts of the, the framing. If you went into DIY, you can then start playing around with how you want things to look. I'm not really gonna go into that right now because it does take a lot of time, but just to know that you do have that ability to really hone in exactly how you want your panels to actually be displaying. One more thing I wanna check with this is the warmth of the color of the white. So let's turn them super warm, select the segments, turn it super warm. Okay, warm all the way. Okay, and you've got three different feels right now. You've got more of an orangey kind of feel. Um, you've got an orange peachy kind of feel, and then you've got the yellow over here. And let's turn these all the way to the coldest setting. And then going cold again, bright, really white. White, a little bit gray because of the way the panels are created. And then you've got a subtle white over here, which could be brighter, but I guess that's what we get. So last but not least, what I've brought with me is tape measure. So let's see the difference in size between the three devices. So we have the Ultra sitting at seven inches. We have the Pro sitting at six and a quarter. And then the Standard also sitting at six and a quarter. So you're getting three quarters of an inch larger um, panels with the Ultra compared to the Pro and the Standard. So if you're liking the content on the channel, please make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out when I bring out more videos with better quality as they are coming through. And hopefully I'll help you to save those dollars, pounds, cents, pence, whatever it is. Just hit subscribe. It don't cost you nothing but a finger tap. So now we've checked out the side-by-side -side comparison between all three devices. It comes down to the pros and cons now. Now, for me personally, I'm going to give you my pros and cons. Then I'll give you my recommendations all wrapped up in this conclusion. And then it's up to you to make that choice for what suits your environment and your pocket. So I'm going to lay out all the pros and cons on the screen right now and let's go through them. So for the standard, the pros. Now let's look at the cost at the end of the day. Sometimes it's all about that, first of all. So they're cheap. Well, compared to other devices that are on the market, they are cheap and they're heavily discounted right now. Secondly, the ease of integration with older GoV kits. So if you've been in the GoV game for a while, these will just fit and work with everything that you have. So, you know, when you are adding new devices, you might find there's a little bit of a mismatch, but for what you have right now and what's on the market and what you can buy at a discount, they're a good buy. The external light distribution, as I showed you in the video, the light actually comes out of the back, so it does spread out across your wall, which is a nice added touch. Now let's look at the pros of the Pro. So it's an improvement on the standard, brighter colors, and the separation is much better. You also get a bit of light leakage at the back as well, but not as much as the original standard one. But the separation does add a little bit more functionality and you know the way and feel that you get from the devices as that extra touch, which all relates to the 3D effect. Now the 3D effect, eh, it's good. It's decent from a distance, they look good. Don't get me wrong. I would definitely purchase these still 
for that alone. Let's move on to the Ultra for the pros and cons. The build quality is outstanding build quality, way better than the other devices. The build and the type of plastic that they've used is high standard, high grade. So you're not gonna have any problems with squeaking or anything like that. They are built to last. I gotta say it's a fantastic product. Now, when you put them up and you know, people that will come and visit you or see your space will be wowed by these devices. And there's so much that you can do which brings me on to the third pro, the versatility. The amount of things that you can do with this device, you can do everything that you can do with the first and second one, plus a whole load of other things. And as you've seen, you know, the LEDs that go around the side and the panels inside, you can do so much with this device. Let's move on to the cons. So for the standard, the install is a little bit fiddly and it's not very intuitive, even though there's videos there to help you out. You are going to have to figure out a few things for yourself and you know you're gonna to have to correct those things so please please do not stick them to the wall until you've got them working fully and the way you want them to so the second con is they're a bit basic not much separation going on they work they do what they need to do but um when you're looking for more variety you're not going to get that from this device as you can see my studio it works but i have other lighting going on which adds more to the atmosphere and then thirdly the light distribution now these get bright enough but you know they don't really expand out like the other devices do so for that fact you know i would say that's a con only if you're comparing it to other devices so for the pro the cons are the matte finish now the matte finish is okay but I think it's a bit too much. They could have like simplified it or made it a little bit more shallow. So it isn't as hazy, um, but it works. It does the job. The size, I think they could have made them bigger. They are the same size as the standard, whereas the Ultra, they do get a lot bigger. So it would have been nice if they added something in between those two sizes rather than having the same size as the standard. The third con is that the separation lines that make that type of triangle shape, they're not really utilize as much as they could do. I don't see any functionality within the app that allows you to just select those. So for that, I would say that's one of the cons. They could have done more with that, but it is what it is and it works. So the cons for the Ultra, there's not too many to be honest. Um, they are pricey. I gotta say that they are pricey compared to the other devices that almost sometimes triple and double the price but you do get triple or double the functionality from where I'm concerned. The second con is the Dream integration. Isn't that great? I think right now it should be way better than it is, but hopefully with updates and upgrades to the software and the firmware within the device, they may enable that to be you know, corrected. The third thing I would say is the options for the color of the housing. So the housing that goes around the lights, it would be great if they would have like a gray or a black. Um, they only have white right now. Please go V, you know, do something about that. And one more thing I wanna add in to that is for a brand new device like this, why does it not have matter? Now you have the new Neon Rope Light 2 that has matter built into it. So why didn't they put that in this device? beats me. So at the end of the day, I think all three devices are great devices from Govi and they will fit any budget that you have. As you see in my studio, I have the standards. I will be upgrading to the ultras at some point, but for right now, I can take a little bit of time before I actually do that, but I would really like to have them in my space. So out of all three of them, the ultra does do the job on every level, but it all depends on what's in your budget. I would probably miss out on the standard right now because you can get the pro for near enough the same price as the standard. So just go for that or just keep an eye out for when Govi do any discounts on their website or on Amazon. And if you need any links for those, they are situated down here in the QR code or in the description, just click on that and order directly from there, which helps me to bring more content to you guys out there. So with that said, I would say stay away from the standard, go for the pro, or go for the ultra, depending on what's in your budget. So I hope you enjoyed another video comparison. And if you'd like to see more, please hit me up in the comments and tell me what you'd like to see. And stay tuned because I have more exciting stuff coming soon. Flux, watch me.